Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at individual genius, this time focusing on German scientist Robert Koch. So, notwithstanding a few concerns over auto-generated subtitles, let's get into it. It's not just Pasteur. In this video, we're going to look at everything you need to know about Koch. Robert Koch was a German scientist. He used Pasteur's work and proved Pasteur's theories. It's important to realise that at this time in history, in the late 1800s, France and Germany were great rivals, and this rivalry spurred both Koch and Pasteur on to discover more and more. Koch also created new vaccines for tuberculosis and cholera, although it should be pointed out that his vaccines weren't always effective. He identified, though, and this is his big contribution, that specific germs cause specific diseases, which meant that people could then look for specific medicines to tackle them, so-called magic bullets, which we may look at another time in more detail. So what were Robert Koch's specific achievements? Koch's work greatly improved how disease was diagnosed. Instead of focusing on the symptoms, doctors could concentrate on the disease itself. In 1882, he discovered the specific germ that caused tuberculosis. In 1883, Koch identified the micro that caused diphtheria. Koch pioneered the use of dyes to make microbes easier to see under the microscope, and he developed methods of growing microbes in the lab, making them easier to study. Examples of dyed microbes can be seen in the petri dish on this slide. It's also worth bearing in mind that the early microscopes could make it quite difficult to distinguish different microbes from each other, so finding a dye to, uh, to identify them made it much easier. These techniques inspired others to find more microbes responsible for other diseases too. In 1890, Robert Koch announced that he had developed a vaccine for tuberculosis. Sadly, this turned out to be ineffective. So what helped Robert Koch make changes? One factor that helped him was war. War might not necessarily sound that helpful in terms of medicine, but it was the rivalry that it created that counted. There was the Franco-Prussian War, which is basically France versus Prussia, now part of Germany. This was between 1870 and 1871, and it turned Pasteur and Koch into national rivals. Each wanted to better the other's achievements. It's worth pointing out that Prussia actually won this war, and it was humiliating for the French. So Pasteur perhaps especially wanted to prove that his country was still a very much powerful nation. Technology also helped. Koch had well-equipped laboratory like Pasteur. He used photography, which was at the time still a quite a novel technology, to record bacteria. He grew bacteria on petri dishes and potatoes. He used dyes to identify bacteria, for example tuberculosis, and he improved microscopes and photography, especially while they were used together. An example of an early uh, photograph from a microscope can be seen on the screen now. Also, he used his own individual genius. He used his talents as a scientist to test his ideas and to investigate more. He was the first to prove an individual bacterium caused disease, in this case anthrax, and he developed a cure for tuberculosis even though it wasn't effective. One of the questions you'll have to answer in the Medicine Through Time exam is one that looks at source interrogation, asking questions about a particular inquiry in relation to a source. We're going to do that now with this source about Robert Koch. It's worth pointing out that if you're doing the Pearson NXL exam, your particular sources will be on medicine in World War I on the Western Front. However, we can practice the skills here and hopefully shed some light on Robert Koch's career. So we're going to study source A. This was a cartoon published in Britain in 1890 when Koch first announced his tuberculosis vaccine. Have a look at details in the source now. The question might read something like this. How would you follow up source A to find out more about the importance of Koch in the development of vaccines? The important bit here is in bold. That is the inquiry that your question and the follow-up responses will need to be focused on. The importance of Koch in the development of vaccines. In your answer, you must give the question that you would ask and the type of source that you would use. And there will be a table for you to complete. So, if you want to have a go at that, you can pause the video now and do it. If not, we'll have a look at a way that you might approach this. It would be worth four marks, and you get a mark for each of these different sections. Firstly, you'd have to choose a detail. Perhaps you'd choose the microscope that he's holding. It's even labelled microscope, which is helpful. You might choose the horse, which is standing on the stake that says tuberculosis. If you look really closely at the saddle, it's actually labelled uh, investigation. And you can see that on the snake it says tuberculosis bacillus. That basically means the tuberculosis bacteria. Uh, bacillus is probably used because it's a Latin term and it sounds a bit like basilisk, which is a term for a monstrous snake from legend. 
What question might you ask? Well, how did Koch discover new vaccines? Did Koch develop a TB vaccine? Did people know that this vaccine was ineffective? What source could you use? Well, you're usually better off using a contemporary source or one from the time, so the medical journals would fit that nicely. Also, you could look at pub Koch's published work and his own notes. Or you might look at government reports. Perhaps there was a need for a tuberculosis vaccine and it was being supported. Now, it's important that you don't need to know the answer to your question in order to ask a question about it. Indeed, if you do know the answer, that doesn't matter either. It just needs to make logical sense. So how might this particular source answer the question? Well, it might be able to tell you what vaccines Koch developed. It might tell you how important Koch was in developing vaccines. And it might also tell you how effective the vaccines were. So you could take any four of these matching bullet points and turn that into a convincing four mark answer. Some final points then. Robert Koch was a German scientist who built on Pasteur's germ theory. He identified specific germs that cause specific diseases, including anthrax, tuberculosis and diphtheria. He used dyes to make germs easier to study under a microscope, which also helped to inspire the hunt for magic bullet medicines that would only target high harmful microbes and not the patient. He developed vaccines, although his much celebrated TB vaccine turned out to be ineffective. However, Koch's work inspired members of his team like Paul Ehrlich and Sahachiro Hatta to do their own investigations in the search of these so-called magic bullet medicines. His work also did a lot to prove Louis Pasteur right, and although the two men were great rivals, it is their work taken together that provides much progress in the history of medicine and the understanding of the cause of disease. But for now, that's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been useful to you, and if it has, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more of the same. But for now, I'll say goodbye and good health. Thanks for watching.